Hello, everybody. This is Justin from KQS, joined by... His lovely sister, Julie. Yeah, right. And this is our second episode of the KQS cast. Yay! Um, I'd like to thank all 56 viewers of the, on the YouTube channel. Well, we got 58 now, so... What? Oh my gosh, we're famous. We are famous. So, uh... This one's going to be a little bit longer because we actually have a lot to talk about. There's like, ugh, I probably almost two months of stuff that has happened. So, and a lot of stuff's gone on in these last two months. So there is definitely a lot to talk about. Okay. Let's first start out with uh, a Mary Poppins y'all. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that is uh, guardians of the galaxy. If you didn't know that by now, I know there's like tons of memes going on nowadays. But uh, and, hmm, it's a really great movie. <laughs> like it is like one of, I don't know, it's probably my top five Marvel movies now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd have to say that because like it made me laugh. Like uh, was it Batista? Oh my gosh! Like <laughs> Batista was so funny. I... You are so embarrassed. <laughs> I I literally like. Was it bowed over laughing? Because there was a part where oh, they were my. talking. I guess we can talk about that now because it's been over a month. It's been over a month. I mean, I think we're not too much. We'll, we'll, try, we'll, spoilery, we'll try to do, we'll, we'll dodge as much spoilers as possible. But like, <laughs> yeah, when Batista was talking about mating rituals and that I laughed so hard, I almost fell out of my chair. Oh, oh like I agree. Yeah, that part, there's the other part where he's like, you are so embarrassed. You should see your face now. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, he, my face. My face literally hurt from laughing that whole time. I think my other favorite part where he was calling Mantis ugly. Yeah, you are ugly. Or you, you are pretty on the inside. Yes. And, and, and even for a weird alien, I thought Mantis was pretty. Yeah, she was kind of cute. But yeah, like... um. Kurt Russell is pretty cool. Well, Kurt Russell's always pretty cool. He's always a cool guy. He's 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 definitely Kurt Russell is definitely one of my favorite actors. I think like the older and older I get, the more I appreciate his movies, and the more I appreciate him as an actor. Well, like I don't know. I I feel like a lot of actors today are just plain. Like like Kurt Russell and like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis, and. They all had lots of personality to them. I think everybody, I think, I feel like, I feel like more newer people are a little bit more moldable. Right. Like, I think like, like, like you mentioned, those guys all had charisma and like their charisma, like shine through their roles. They always have a distinct voice and. Yes. Cause I, I can tell, I mean, you could blindfold me. I could easily tell Kurt, I could easily pick Kurt, yeah, Kurt Russell out of a, out of a lineup. Like that's him. I almost want to be like, come on. (laughs) Oh, but no, it it was a good movie. It was really funny. It was like. It was heartfelt. Oh, geez. (laughs) uh, (laughs) I'm trying to think some good stuff. Um, Had some really cool action scenes. The was the blue guy. I I forget what his name is. Yondu. Yondu. Yeah. He had that. That action scene was awesome. (laughs) That thing, like everything is slow motion, looking like everybody's fault. Like it just looked, it just looked like it was just raining dead bodies and just how much yes. destruction. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. And then it was also cool. Is I mean, I I'm gonna talk about Baby Groot. I mean, if you haven't heard enough about Baby Groot, I loved Baby Groot. He was so cute. <laughs> I wanted to hug him and squeeze him. And then, like, the Constellation Groot at the end of the credits. I want to get that as a tattoo. <laughs> no, that'd be cool. Where would you put that tattoo? Probably on my leg. Okay. Aww. Probably next to Tina. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> also, the soundtrack. Oh, yes. The soundtrack was very good. It's always like, well, I don't know. That's, a, that's like mom and dad music right there. It is. It's the stuff we, it's stuff we grew up on, so it's always... <laughs> Or similar or stuff similar. Well, similar. Well, except like Sam Cooke. I was kind of surprised they threw Sam Cooke in there, but I'm glad they did. Sam Cooke is like one of my favorites, so that made me happy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's it's a good movie. I ha- it's a lot of fun. 
like literally, literally see it like literally just see it for Batista alone. Oh, my nipples are sensitive. Oh, my yes. nipples. <laughs> <laughs> just that alone is like funny because like yeah, like he um um like early in the movie they had like it was like um he had like the little uh, spacesuits kind of it was like a little air bubble kind of thing and he didn't want to put it on because like no my nipples are sensitive yeah <laughs> yeah it's just funny like hearing him talk about that kind of stuff like not even not even much emotion to it and then ha ha ha, ha. yes <laughs> like I, I really just recommend seeing it alone just for that like like he they, they they like they took the concept of him being too literal before of the like nothing would get over my head i would catch it yes and they just they ramped it up to 11 and it got even funnier. oh my gosh yes <laughs> and it worked i mean it wasn't like it wasn't like he was trying too hard or they were trying too hard it just worked and it just yeah just, like I said made me made, made me laugh so hard mm-hmm it's a good movie. It's a, it's, it it's it's one of my top fives. I think my top well my top one is still uh, Winter Soldier, but that's because the Metal Gear aesthetic of like how like I don't know Hydra always seems like the Patriots from Metal Gear. That would be a espionage good way of describing and him. all that kind of stuff. So I'm like he 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 he. So or, or a good way of describing the Patriots to someone who has no idea what Metal Gear Solid is. The Just team? think of the Hydra. Just think of Hydra. <laughs> The New England Patriots. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on those guys. Yes, yeah, sports ball. Sports ball. <laughs> go but team. It's a good movie, but uh, yeah, go see it. Um, if you don't mind me talking about uh, going to Anime Oasis. Yeah, go ahead. Hog the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, I get to talk. No, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, it was. Uh, I went to uh, Anime Oasis. It's a con. It's a con in Boise, Idaho, and a four-day con which is kind of crazy because i'm always used to three-day cons and just like oh four four days four days runs runs you down but it was a lot of fun like um it's about a five hour drive over there going 80 miles an hour woo like usually i go usually i go five over mostly but oh I, i couldn't even i think maybe 83 most of the time and Ugh, crazy! Like, just sometimes, like, sometimes semi. Like, I don't know. One thing that bugs me is like, but it bugs me when people try to pass and they don't have the speed to pass. Oh yeah. And then like you, you go like it. it su- there was there was a few moments like it, it was kind of with trucks, and I understand because I know you're pulling all those trailers, but man, and you they're slowing down traffic to like sixty seven on an eighty. That's a little scary because like people yeah. are like halt like breaking a lot behind you and. It kind of sucked. I thought I was going to make it on one tank. I was so hopeful, but no, 30 miles to go. And it's like, no, like you, you need to refuel right now. Ah, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I bought a new camera, the Sony a 6,500 and I, I, I'm moving into fancy cameras now. Cause I, the, the one, the a 6,500, it's one of those cameras you take the, the lenses. It's not a big DSLR. It's kind of like a, it's a smaller body, but it's um you can put a lens on it and all that stuff, put a bird on it, as they say. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I got to really like that I was excited because you really get to you really get to flex its muscle. Like you because I mean doing a few like pictures, whatever, but when you're at a con and it's like, Can I take a picture? Can I take a picture? And I went to a few photo photo shoots um with my friends. They all kind of invited me, and that actually made me happy because like I got a bunch of stuff i have still uh, like well you, you remember i put on my facebook post i have like 50 gigabytes of yes of pictures and movies and i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> but yeah it was actually really cool as they had a swimsuit contest over there which is something i don't think well i don't think it ever have happened here in utah yeah here at anime bonsai i don't actually well at comic-con well, actually at comic-con, comic-con either comic-con or even fanex well it might be too cold for fanex but Oh, fa- oh, eh. That's the f- that's the thing of cosplay. People, oh, you should have seen people in their big big costumes in ugh, 80, 90 degree weather. Oh man. <laughs> See, I, I I can't do that. I I love be- I was only Ash for one day, and it was just like, ugh. like I I don't think I could ever pull off Chris Redfield running in the 
Cause like, Oh, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff weighing you down. And, but it was a lot of fun. The, the swimsuit contest was kind of cool though. People, there's this of little, course you'd like the swimsuit contest. Oh, well, of course. But <laughs> there's this like little, well, can't say it now because if I say I talk about little boys, <laughs> there's this, <laughs> no, there's this like this little kid dressed up as Luffy from One Piece, and you have a little oh. inner tube. So I got some good pictures of that. Um, uh, yeah, there was a pretty cute Espeon um EV EV evolution, dark evolution. So so I, that that, that I, it, uh, that's uh, that, that that's like. Yee. <laughs> When you said Espeon, I knew it was a Pokemon. I just didn't know which one. <laughs> and like, um, I think one of my other favorites is Son. Was it that weird little egg yolk little thing that like? Oh, Gudetama, I think. I it's think like that's the what, lazy egg yolk. Like, yeah, mm. it was funny. Uh, some girl dressed up like that, and she had a little like a uh, a uh, um egg white pillow and she threw it on the ground and she just laid just sprawled out like Bleh. that's gonna be my next cosplay <laughs> it was cool like oh man i i don't know i think the person who should have won well as like i i felt like they were like i think the person who won was like a Yu-Gi-Oh one it was cool and everything oh. it was cool fancy almost like egyptian kind of thing it was oh, cool okay. but i i don't know i like i like the performance of the egg i, I mean I, I i enjoy that more but i don't know that's i don't think i'd be a good cosplay judge because I'd, I'd i'd judge more in performance than i know craftsmanship and all that stuff but at the same time it's a swimsuit contest so it's like there's not a lot of material <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> So did any panels that you went and did you check out any panels? I checked out a few. There's um one is a I forget what her actual name is, but she she's uh fluent fluent in Japanese and she's done some video games like voice acting up there. Like well, you know how funny kind of Japanese voice acting is that kind of sometimes they get like someone who can just speak English who's I mean over time I bet she'd probably become a better actress, but like kind of over time like it just kind of hire her because she can speak but she was just kind of talking about like what's what it's like in japan and kind of asking questions what like um share her stories because i guess she's a she was worked in a radio station i don't know oh. but yeah it was like that was the way i, th I think i told you the, the, that fun funny story because like uh how uh japanese kind of have a tough time of their l's and their r's and they're like okay when you're doing this like clap instead of saying clap they, the guy said crap <laughs> and everyone oh just kind of laughed I, I don't think i could i don't think i could hold it in either because i'd yeah. be like oh crap <laughs> everybody clap <laughs> just, <laughs> pretty much just like that. i would die <laughs> i'm just like i'm sorry i don't mean to be, i don't mean to make you feel embarrassed but this is funny <laughs> but yeah um i got to see uh, his name is Bryce Pappenbrook. I think that's his name. Uh, he does the voice of uh, that Blue Exorcist dude, the Rino Kumara. I know you haven't seen much of Blue Exorcist. No, I think I've only seen what, a couple episodes. Yeah, you've only seen. He's the main character, dude. He's okay. the one who he was the more misfit character guy. I want to cosplay him someday. Like, ugh, and then I have to. Ugh, just thinking of like trying to um skinny jeans well skinny jeans well not, not like not that just like ugh, contacts oh because I, I would love to do both because they're both twin brothers because i said i could just put on my glasses for one one part of the day and then put dry contacts the rest of the day which yeah or vice versa <laughs> i want to do it someday because i think it'd be cool i like both characters they're awesome but yeah i got to talk to him he's pretty he's a pretty well i think all all voice actors are pretty nice people yeah, I mean, like the ones that we've encountered, I don't think I've ever really encountered an asshole. <laughs> yeah, but like, um, yeah, he was cool. Um, yeah, the, uh, where it was is it was it was a cool little place. Like, oh, inside the city, it was a little crazy because there's a bunch of one way streets and uh, traffic got a little crazy, and I almost thought I couldn't park in the inside the hotel because I thought I thought it was just, but like just full. Luckily I did. And like, but it was like a hotel on the first lobby floor. They had, um, you could walk out and it was almost like a hockey rink. And like, that was actually pretty cool. Like it was like a hockey rink and then a big courtyard, which led to another building. So 
you had a you had a good way to I mean you had a, it was a pretty big pretty big area to kind of walk around it, it wasn't it wasn't it was like kind of like squished but it wasn't I mean like having a big hockey rink oh yeah <laughs> to work with is cool but yeah it was a lot of fun got to use the hot tub nice got to swim nice I got burned. Nice. <laughs> no, I, uh, that's why I think that's like the nice thing I like about summer is like I like to burn. I like to get super brown. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Had had lots of fun with my friends. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun because I uh I brought my I brought in my Chromecast. Shh. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Did you? <laughs> and like uh, we essentially just watched. Um, I would bring it into their uh, their hotel. And we just watch YouTube videos for a little bit and then just go to bed. Do it again. That's the fun thing of cons. You're, you're going to learn that once you go to Bonsai. Oh, yeah. I. Yeah, you're going to Bonsai for the first I'm time. I'm going to Bonsai for the first time. Yay, anime Bonsai. So, yeah. You do all this crazy stuff. You walk around a whole bunch. You stay up late and then you wake up early and you do it again. Yeah. <laughs> that is essentially what cons are like. Well, then, especially if you cosplay, you have to like wear all these crazy costumes. And I, I enjoy, I don't know. I, I need to, well, actually after seeing the, the Resident Evil movie, I want to do, I want to update Chris's outfit, but for now <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with what I got, but it was a lot of fun as my first out of state con and I'm all happy. Got a lot of pictures, got a lot of video to look through, Bleh. <laughs> but it was fun. Um, let us move on to the next thing. Wonder Woman. Or as when I used to say when I was a little wubba woman. Yeah, she couldn't speak right. I couldn't speak right. I still can't. <laughs> <laughs> Not when I'm trying to drink water. <laughs> I was excited for it. Well, actually, okay. So Wonder Woman. I mean, like everybody, I'm going to give my testimony. I'm going to give my testimony about Wonder Woman. Um you know, I was born, like, when I was a little girl, like, you know, the old TV show with Linda Carter, I used to love, I I watched that a lot. Um, I also, like, when I was little, my mom got me a coloring book, and it was basically comics, and they were, um, it was Batman, and Superman, and Wonder Woman, and of course, I colored all over Wonder Woman, and, <laughs> and I think, like, I think Wonder Woman is kind of an icon for me. And I mean, it's a feminist icon, you know, strong, independent, strong, independent woman. And it is just kind of um, just really, just really cool. And then also like I've been reading, I have this book about the author and how, I mean, well, obviously, I mean, like she was an Amazon. So, or she is an Amazon and, you know, all that Greek mythology influence, um, which I am huge into Greek mythology. So that was another thing. And then also that the actress Linda Carter is also who played Wonder Woman in the TV series is half Hispanic. Ooh. So yay. Yay. Half Hispanics. Yay. <laughs> um, so I was really excited. And then like I was excited uh, when I heard that she was gonna be have Wonder Woman was gonna have a cameo in Batman versus Superman, and then when she came on the screen, I lifted my hands up in the air <laughs> and shook them around. And you and got hype for I that got, music. Oh, geez, I got addicted to that song. I played it as much as I can. <laughs> but I really was excited because she was so beautiful and so powerful. And, you know, like I heard the movie was coming out and I was kind of nervous because I like Batman versus Superman. Um, but, you know, as we've talked many times about Suicide Squad, <clears throat> well, actually, I can't say that really much anymore. It's kind of growing on me. I mean, well, we, my, watched, we watched it again. It's, yeah, which, which, with the hubs. And, it's not as bad. It's not second as, time around. Yeah. But like Joker is still an edge lord. Yes. He's like, hey, look at me. Ah, I'm damaged. <laughs> but yeah, it's eh, the the Wonder Woman movie. It was pretty good. <laughs> it was really good. It was really really good. I I got well the fight scenes and it was cool with the women in the fight scenes, and and it had um, 
it had not only they had the actress who played Buttercup from Princess Bride, <laughs> who she she was kicking ass. And then um, I think her, her uh, the woman who played Wonder Woman's mom was in uh, Gladiator. She was the. Are you not entertained, Joel? No. I was entertained, <laughs> but it was so cool. Every time I see women kick ass in movies, I get all hype. I'm like, <laughs> actually, that sounded creepy. <laughs> I didn't like, never mind. Not that kind of hype, but I'm just like, like, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and cut somebody's head off now, you know? But, but oh, <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> It's like something I would say. Oh, yeah, that is something you would say. Actually, you would say that she can fight your battles for you. That's mm-hmm. what you would say. <laughs> but but I just got so excited. It was so, it was really good. It was really, really good. And then also, like, they had a Native American character. And I, Justin and I watched it. And we, I mean, I went over to him. I'm like, he's going to have a role longer than five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, poor Adam Beach. Oh, poor Adam Beach. But um, and the cool thing I read, they did an interview with the the actor who the Native American actor. Um, they let him pick out the regalia regalia that he wore that was like traditional to his tribe, and I think he spoke to her in Shoshone. I can't remember. I'll have to look that up again. Mm-hmm. But he's the one who, um wrote who who improvised that that was his native language and he spoke um i hate to say that correctly you have to watch the movie real engine and you'll get what i the documentary real engine r-e-e-l engine i-n-j-u-n um and it talks about native americans in film and you'll know what i mean when i when i say he talked to her in real native american (laughs) (laughs) But that was, it was really good. It was really good. Yeah. I just liked her. I like, I loved her reaction to ice cream. Oh, oh gosh. It's, ice yes. cream. it's so good. I love it. <laughs> yes. I think like my favorite thing. See, I, 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 sh- I, I sh- uh, close shop like Wonder Woman. It needs to be mobile. It needs to be tech. It, ne- it needs to, like, it needs to be tons of range of motion. <laughs> I, I am subconsciously dressing like that i think my my style icon is ziva david from ncis Mm -hmm. but no that's just like oh it's like i don't know something i think that's why i get heart like tough with cosplays too because some of those big builds like you can't move around (laughs) you're just moving straight (laughs) yeah you're like you're like a barbie doll is like near but yeah the the action scenes were cool i like like the um that that oh was like fun i guess the Zaibatsu podcast. I was listening to them. I guess the executives, they wanted to cut out the cool no man's land. Oh my God. The, the best action scene of the movie. It was amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh <laughs> like, yes. I go ahead and you talk about it and then I'll talk but, about but like it. Like it, it's in, it, it's like really good. It's like got a lot of like a lot of the typical like slow motion and stuff, but like it's, yeah. it's very well shot. It's very like the camera, it literally just it's almost like they follow i mean like they literally follow Wobba woman wonder woman and like you see like people getting thrown out of windows and oh, you see yeah. like all this stuff and like it's see this is why i don't like don't like big business guys because they're just kind of so stupid they're they, so out of touch they with don't. things yeah but like there's a lot of cool i mean i don't know i like the whole movie, I think my my thing the whole movie is like I just wanted to hear that music. Oh, I know. I, I waited like I think I think they finally played it in like the like the, like a little bit after an hour. And I was like, play it. every time like you hear like a little like a little just a little little bit of the drums, a little. And I was getting ready. I was like lifting my arms up, and then I'm like, oh, not yet. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> so, even um even the hubs, he was like because. Um, I play that song for him a lot, so he he's familiar with that song, and he's all, they heard they didn't even play the song in the movie. Even <laughs> he was disappointed, which was funny. But yeah, it, it was a lot of fun, good action, and the last little bit was okay. Like I, I yeah, I'm just not, I'm not too big on C, big big CG 
big CG battles. Like you can kind of tell it sometimes. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm really it's just like, eh, it's okay, but I'm not like, it kind of looks silly. <laughs> I guess like I was thinking like the very end because it's like oh we're gonna wrap this up we're gonna wrap this up in a tiny in a neat little box and it's like no I don't don't do that you know I know mm-hmm. they had to talk about origin scene oh yeah before I forget if I can real quickly go ahead talk about my favorite part in no man in the no man's land battle okay so in the earlier on the beach with all the Amazons um, Steve Trevor sees uh, Amazon, one of them yells to the other, and shield. So one of them crouches down with her shield on her back. The other Amazon jumps on the shield and catapults her, you know, just like pushes her. It was, it was awesome. So like they're in the battle and Steve Trevor, he gets three guys, which I thought was cool. It had took three guys to do this instead of one. Well, the car you doing? Well, okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay. that was a shield, a okay. shield that you could carry with one hand. That that is true. That Versus is true. a gigantic like, psh, night or well, nineteen twenties, yeah, nineteen twenties, nineteen tens, nineteen twenties, nineteen tens, nineteen twenties, World War One, like the invention of the automobile car. That's true. That is true. Like those things weighed so much. That is true. With a max speed of thirty. <laughs> <laughs> See, everyone was everyone was so impressed of Captain America outrunning that cab when at the, at the beginning of his origin story thing. That thing was only going like thirty. Yeah, <laughs> it's not that impressive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but well, still, they told they told and um, Wonder Woman to jump on it. It was cool to see her catapult. Yeah, so that was cool. It was I don't know, like, and I liked it too because like I mean it. It really, I mean, it really took its time with like, I mean, building characters. Yes, yes, yes. That was actually a nice thing because sometimes (laughs) I like when characters are built up. I like when you want to care about a character. Yeah, or you know, like a little more about it than that, like. Versus movies that are just kind of like almost like barely have anything. And it's like, why are they in love? (laughs) Or you you know what I mean? It's kind of like these weird forced love relationships or whatnot. And it's just kind of like, oh, man. Or, or even if like they, they give a hint of somebody's backstory, like a, a sentence on their backstory, and then they never talk about it again, and you're like, <laughs> well, "What about that? I didn't know what. I want to know more." Uh huh. But yeah, it was a good movie. Go get some ice cream and go watch that movie. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Next thing we should talk about: uh, Ninja Terminator. <laughs> Ninja Terminator. Okay. Garfield phone. Garfield phone. We 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 were calling it Garfield phone. We, um, uh, Cinema Snobs YouTube channel did a f- review over about it and, and, uh, we saw it at Brewies, which we like to go see shitty movies at. Yes. You need beer. <laughs> you need beer. Um, and they, they advertise it as the best worst movie and oh my gosh. Yes, it was. It was horrible. It's so like, it's like, it's, it's got really bad dubbing, like the, the goofy, like out of, I mean, like they, the doesn't even ma- what match their mouths no. which is like even funnier but it's like just some some white ninja guy <laughs> with like camouflage ninja and it yes. was like it's like the funniest things because like sometimes like well what i guess oh what it was is like some they jammed two movies into <laughs> into one movie which i hate to say it because like i'm like watching all these youtube channels about movies and cinematography and all that stuff I, i'm picking that up more than I used to, but I did not pick that up. So I'm kind of embarrassed to say I did not pick that up. Well, it's fine. I mean, it just, I mean, it's like dubbed. They can say whatever they want to. They can make oh, any yeah. dialogue they want. But it was like, it was really funny because like the one guy, the white ninja guy, he's like, he, he stole some golden ninja armor. And uh, it just looked like, so it looked like they bought it as like a really cheap thing. Like, well, actually it looked okay, but it was like split into three pieces and three ninjas took the armor and went away with it. And then, then the, the ninja clan wanted to get it back. And I, I loved how they ran. Remember that movie, how they run in sync sometimes down the yes. stairs? Like, yes. <laughs> it was so funny. But then, like, there was that. And then like, 
there was this other story of some guy named Jaguar Wong. He was some cool, he was a cool guy with shades. He worked for the White Ninja. He worked for the White Ninja because he wanted the golden. He wanted the other piece of the Golden Ninja armor or something weird like that. Yeah. And then it was really funny because the the thing that made me laugh the most is like the because um most of the time <laughs> the White Ninja guy he'd be at home. And, like, all of a sudden, like, this little toy robot came in, barged in. Like, he opened his door and, like, a fire extinguisher, like, little smoke thing went off. Like, shh. And he did, like, a flip and had little his, like, hands, like, kind of like, I'm going to do, like, karate. And, like, this little toy robot just walks in. Like, do, 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 don't mind me. (laughs) Yes. And then it's like, I have a message from the ninja clan. You will return the ninja armor in three days. Oh, yeah. It was, it was almost like the ring. Seven days. <laughs> and then speaking of the white ninja stuff that made me laugh was like, he's all sitting at home and he's sitting at the kitchen table and he's sharpening his sword or or his light ninja star, his size or whatever. And then like somebody comes in to attack him and then and then like blink. And then he's in his full ninja card, ready to fight. Yeah, it was cool. It was almost like instantaneously. Yeah, like uh, it wasn't someone trying to kill him, and then he just yes. he, like he well, no he uh, he wanted breakfast, and he had watermelon. Oh, he cut it yeah. with it. He, he cut it with his samurai sword or his ninja sword, and it just kind of all like plopped out. And then all of a sudden, like this ninja tried to kill him, and then like he they were all like shooting fire extinguishers and stuff at each yes. other. And it made me laugh. Just, I mean, yeah, just the fact that he instantly changed. Like he he went from like kind of sweat sweatpants and like a, I mean, stuff you'd wear like at the t-shirt. gym. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he's like, hey, "Look at my cool like, camouflage ninja pajamas." <laughs> oh yes, and then also that how he conducted all his business on a Garfield phone. And it was cool because like when you when you would um when you would uh, take it off the the receiver or whatnot. You uh, the Garfield's eyes would open, but when you when you'd hang up, <laughs> Garfield would go, go back, back to sleep. sleep. <laughs> it was cool. Just here he's looking at someone with a Garfield phone, literally saying, "I have to rebuild the Ninja Empire." Uh, it's yes. like funny. Oh, and the, like the cinematography was hilarious. Like oh the, my gosh! There was yes. some hilarious parts where um, they they were just so out of frame. <laughs> And then the guy would like, they were either zoomed. There was a few parts where it was like so zoomed in and it would cut off everyone's heads. <laughs> you could, or you, all you could see, they're sitting at a table and all you can see their hands. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like the guy is like, do, 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 do. And then you oh, see him, shit. then you see him just like slay, <laughs> slightly like pan back up to recorrect it because he does, doesn't look through the viewfinder. <laughs> Yeah, some of them are were, were trying to be subtle, and all, and some of them were like, "Oh shit, I'm out of frame!" Ah, you know. So. Yeah. Oh man, they're like, oh, just yeah. It was like it was two different stories. Like it always like the um, one of the fights made me laugh. Like that guy with the wig. Oh. Yeah, oh yes, the big the, bad. He was the big bad with a blonde. He had with a blonde a- wig. And it was the funniest thing because it was like this big reveal. He took off his wig. It's like, oh shit, he means business. <laughs> that's yeah. just, that's what it was like. <laughs> oh man, it, that's a funny movie. I almost want to find it just to watch it again because yes. oh, that was that was great. <laughs> yeah, Ninja Terminator. If you want a good laugh, I think I've even seen it on YouTube. You can watch it. You could watch it on YouTube if you, I don't know. I don't know if you can own it, but I know you can watch it on YouTube. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. Um, I guess, la, well, eh, we still got a little bit of time, but want to move over to the Resident Evil movie? Yes. Yeah. Well, we saw it last night. Um, this is not the Mila Jovovich or Hovovich or however she says her name nowadays. I know. I'm not even sure. I like, don't even like know. I like I used to think Char- Charlize Ther- Theron was Charlize Theron or what? Oh yeah, but, she's Charlize Theron. Yeah, something like that. But uh, anyway, this is the CG movies. Um, these ones are actually based off the games. <laughs> like these are not actually like uh, it's not like the other Resident Evil uh, movies from the uh, like the, the the live action ones. It's more like a zombie apocalypse kind of thing going on. But this one, 
is more is more loosely based off the games. There's a lot of reference to the games. The characters are the actual characters, actually voiced by the real actors. The voice I, actors were the uh, name. Real voice actors, and I think is really cool about it. And like, um, it was a lot of I, I I well I enjoyed it as a as a big Resident Evil fan. I played since two, so I I, I know the story. I know what's going on. So I, like, I was just kind of like, what's going on? What's going to happen? What's, ooh, Leon's doing cool, sick moves. <laughs> No, there was definitely there was definitely some cool action sequences and stuff. And then um, I am not I've never really played the games. I've never really watched him play the games. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, but it was it was pretty cool. Like um, we saw it with Fathom Events, which well, this is our third movie this year with Fathom Events, yeah. which has been really cool. Um, I, I, if you're really big into movies, I recommend going to see it because they show how the movie was made. They do trivia interview. Well, um, not this time, but well, not this time, but usually they do like, um, yeah, trivia and they do like, um, it's kind of cool to see behind the scenes. Cause I keep forgetting that this movie is, is um like, it's not only like CG, but it's like actually motion captured. So these are actual real actors doing the moves and the walks and everything. It's not just like hand animated. That was really cool to watch, which is kind of, which kind of makes the action scenes more cool. Cause I mean, of course, I mean, of course they'll probably w- with the more elaborate stuff, they'll, that's not a real person. They're not going to hang people on wires, throwing people in the air and stuff, but or throw people through windows. <laughs> But like, um, it's really cool seeing that kind of act, like that kind of little detail attention. I mean, well, attention to detail towards like the that movie. It makes the I said it just makes the action movies the action look even cooler. And it like, hey, there's like a new motorcycle. The the company let oh, it let yeah. us model it and everything. And Leon rides around it all the time, shooting zombie dogs and all that stuff. And yes, he loves that motorcycle. Which is kind of funny now that I officially know how to ride a motorcycle. I was paying attention and I was telling Justin, I'm like, you can't do that. That's like, not real. That's not real. But <laughs> it was still fun to watch. I might I might try I might try and break how he breaks. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like he was going like eighty. Yeah. Well I got you gotta learn that's one of the things we had to learn in class is learn how to hard break. So <laughs> Are you gonna do like a stompy or Cause they, like, there's the uh, there's quick, the wheelie quick, quick stop. There's the wheelie and there's like the stoppy where you like hold the brake and you kind of go like, on yeah, one so. front wheel, and hopefully you don't fall over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like how Leon did it. How he braked is that in you know instead of using your foot for the foot brake, he put his foot on the hand brake <laughs> and braked like that. So I I got it. That's a that's my next goal. Oh gosh. I I am so not. I am so joking. I would never do anything like that. Don't try any of this at home, children. Don't try anything at home. We're not responsible. Yeah, we're not responsible for any injuries or deaths. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, was, it was a pretty cool movie. Like the, actually, I mean, well, like we were talking, the graphics was pretty good. Like the, the graphics were really the, good. The quality of CG, like it, it, it looked pretty realistic. I mean, like even though the characters they they look a little stylized, like I, I don't think it was like the uncanny valley, like. I mean, they, I think some of their some people's faces were kind of like some of the animations were a little funny. Yeah, but like, um, I, I think everyone looked. I mean, every, everyone looked pretty good. Like it, like how you said, like New, like that part, of the, that shot of the of New York. How you're like, wow, that looks pretty real. Yeah, actually, it did. Cause Even like, though it's not dirty enough, but still, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it was a clean New York, but it was. It looked like. Um, the actual scene, even with the people walk, I mean, like, cause they were far, far enough away that it looks like it was actual like film footage, not computer generated footage. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. It looked pretty, it looked pretty good. I, I liked it. And I like, well, yeah, this is one of those things where it's like, if you're a fan of the games, if you played the games and know a little bit about the games, even just a little bit, you'll probably, you'll probably enjoy them. You'll probably enjoy it. And, it was pretty good. Uh, they have it on digital now. So I would, if if you're curious, try it on digital, and then they're going to release it on Blu-ray next month around my birthday. Hint, hint. 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 Hey, I'm the one who gets to hint. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just pretend I didn't hear the hint. No, just yes. kidding. Just like you always say, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. I never did hear that. <laughs> um, anything else you can think of? Anything else going on in your life? Because I know we were just talking. This is about... 
goofy movies, but you got your motorcycle. Yes, I finally got my motorcycle license. Yay! Yay. Watch out. Yes, not watch <laughs> out because I'm dangerous. Watch out because I don't want to die. Um, <laughs> um, but actually, that was a really, I took it through here in Salt Lake through Harley Davidson, took the women's writing course. The instructors, all three of them, Heather, Don, and Trish were great. Um, had a lot of fun. Um, feel pretty good. Um, it was it was just a great class. I mean, and even if you like, even if you're you decide you want to try it, and then you decide that riding, um, having your own bike is not for you. I really think it makes you a better passenger because you learn the physics of the bike. So, like when you're with your whoever you're riding on the back with, um. When they turn, you know how to turn because I. It's kind of weird. Like I, I know it's it's little things that you don't think about. I mean, like we're how to lean, you know, in turns. But if you're not used to it, you're like, okay, how do I lean? I'll follow you. This doesn't feel safe. But then it's like then you learn how to ride it. And like okay, I'm gonna lean this way because this is what feels natural. So, anyways, um, excuse me, and that's that, which I'm excited about, but. Something I'm really excited about that I tell people as often as I can is about American Gods. The book um, written by Neil Gaiman um, back in early 2000s made it for a TV series for stars. Basic. I'm going to try and go as spoiler free as possible. Um, Because I have not seen it. I kind of want to see it. It's, um, it is. If you're a big mythology, well, even if you are a big into mythology, you definitely, I think, will appreciate it. I'm like I mentioned earlier, I love Greek mythology, so um, it's it's basically um, all these different mythologies, all these different gods from uh, Roman, Norse, Ger- old German, Celtic, um, old Russian. Uh, African, um, Egyptian, um, Middle Eastern, like gods, like people, um, as they immigrated to the America, uh, immigrated to America, they brought over their traditions and their gods. And so their gods live here now and, um, they, um, trying to think how to explain it spoiler free because it's kind of hard <laughs> and um you know they're living here in the u.s now and they look like they have adapted you know they with the times and and adapted to life in the u.s um they are not as powerful anymore because they are not worshipped like they are and then you know like people you know different you know directing their worship to different you know, religions like Christianity or whatnot. Flying spaghetti monster. Flying spaghetti monster. But also talking about the they're the old gods and then there's the new gods. And then the new gods they have our technical boy, which is like technology and the internet, media, easy to explain, and Mr. World. And no Harambe? No Harambe, but Harambe might be in, in the middle between media and, <laughs> and technical boy. But these new gods are powerful and they're fighting with the old gods or they're trying to get the old gods to join their side. And and it's the visuals are really amazing. The story is really good. They talk about the different mythology. Um and then too, like there were like little things I'm going to share that are, well, I'm, I don't think are spoiler free, like, cause they're talking like media was talking about how, you know, they've gained power. She has power. They media, they have portrayed as a woman and it's not just a woman. Like she's um, playing all these different roles, different actors and stuff. Um, but um, media was saying like as much, like they get their worship not from like what we think of like with Christianity, you know, praying and attending church and, you know, it's like giving your time, giving your time to these new gods. Um, and which I thought was kind of a, in a way, even though I think Neil Gaiman grew up Scientologist as a Scientologist and then he became, I think, an atheist. Um, 
as far as I know, I don't know exactly what his faith is now, but I feel like that certain thing is a very Christian concept. Cause I remember I grew up very, I grew up being, um, very religious evangelical, like, you know, don't like talking about the 10 commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And like not talking about like, you know, I'm going to pray to the flying spaghetti monster instead of God, <laughs> and, but like talking about other things in our lives that, we put all our emphasis or all our give all our time and, and stuff. And even like things like media, which you wouldn't, you know, sit all day and watch TV and, and read and, you know, um, all this stuff. So I really thought that was cool. And then there's, there's like 10 different Jesuses, which is kind of funny. My um, favorite Jesus is buddy. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I am giving a thumbs up. You cannot see, but I am giving a thumbs up in that. But that, that, cause, um, you know, different sects of Christianity have different views of Jesus. And then also that kind of reminded me of, um, the show called Give Me a Break. When I was a kid, it was about a black maid to this white family. And she took them to church with her one time. And there was a picture of black Jesus. And the little white boy was like, wait a minute, I thought Jesus was white. She goes, well, to white people, he's white. To black people, he's black. And to Kermit the Frog, he's green. And I just thought it was kind of funny. I mean, like, you know, like, like to me, that kind of tied into the American gods now because, you know, we all see, everybody sees Jesus differently. And, and it was just really interesting. But it's a really good show if you have stars, the stars app. I'm not going to say anything about pirating, <laughs> but but really watch the show. It was such an amazing show. I, I'm i probably going to rewatch it again, and I rarely do that, you know, unless I'm, like, really bored, I'll rewatch a show. But I, I've got I watched it. I'm going to rewatch it, and I'm going to read the book. So that's that's something I'm really excited about. Okay, before we have to go, um, let's Don't. talk about um, Ghibli Fest, because that's coming up. That'll come up next week, and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I want to say Jiggly Fest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> um, but what Ghibli Fest is, um, it's it's the Miyazaki movies. It uh, starts out with Totoro, and I think Kiki's Delivery Service is next month. Like, it's a, it's a, I think it's like six movies over kind of sprinkled throughout a few months or uh, I think like five or six. Yeah, probably five or six months, but uh, it's, it's really fun. If you're in, if you have ever been curious about anime, I would recommend checking it out. It's uh really cool. J Miyazaki movies are the easiest movie to kick people into the anime pit. And um, it's always really accessible. Uh, check out. Well, probably you can probably Google Ghibli Fest. Um, I'll even put a description underneath uh, just in case you guys want to look and uh, check out some more anime movies. Support support more anime movies. Yes, please. We, you know, that's where the, we need more support. Anime needs more support. And definitely it does because like, oh, there's, there's been some good movies like, like the Cowboy Bebop movie. I would have loved, yes. I would have loved it would've, if it would have, if it would have had an actual release. It had the movie poster, but it never, <laughs> it got canceled and it went straight yeah. to DVD. So now, now we actually have actual anime to talk with and, or, uh, I mean, to actually watch in movie theaters and all that stuff. But I, if you can, and you love the Ghibli movies, I really recommend supporting them. So well, I just, even, even if you like whimsical movies, like whimsical movies with a good moral and the most beautiful art, take your kids, take your kids. This is something you could seriously take your children to take your kids to princess. Mononoke. I almost, I was going to say almost a no <laughs> on that one. That one's a little too violent. <laughs> oh, there's the part where Ajitaka hits, uses the, uh, he uses an arrow and he gets like infected yeah. to like rip some dude's arm off and decapitates another samurai Lord guy. <laughs> it's just like, and, and <laughs> prostitutes. We have to talk about prostitutes too. <laughs> yeah. But, but and all the other ones, except maybe that one, but it does have a good story about the environment. Yeah. You and your hippies and your smart cars and electric cars and all that stuff. But yeah. Um, Ghibli Fest. It's cool. They got Howl's Moving Castle. Spirit Away is a very good one. Spirit Away is one of my favorite movies. 
I think Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, Castle in the Sky, I think. I said, I have to look at it too. I just, I just saw it and I bought it <laughs> and dragging Julie with me. So. Yeah. I think Nausicaa, Nausicaa, like I'm excited for it because there's going to be some movies I had not, not only not seen, but not seen in the theaters like Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, um, Kiki's Delivery Service, Castle of Sky. I've seen Totoro, but I have never seen it in theaters. So I'm excited for that as well. Cool. Okay, I think we have talked more than enough. <laughs> Looks like we're ready on like 50 minutes right now. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I mean, hey, people want to listen to it. It's fine. Like, we had a lot We had a lot to talk about this month. Like, we really did. I mean, pra- this is practically two podcasts in one because me and my lazy ass <laughs> didn't, put, didn't put the other podcasts on right away. <laughs> but uh, um, actually, yes. We're going to get going and uh, have to see what Julie's sign on for the month is. All right. Everybody ready? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Adios, muchachos. <laughs> which means which means goodbye, muchachos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are so lame. I am. But you love me. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm gonna get working on stuff like um our well our, our great uncle passed away and I haven't really been doing too much. Just kind of been in a little meh mood that and just trying to figure out what was going on with that. But uh new week, new month. I'm gonna try and oh, I have so much to do. I have two let's plays to fill. I have the I had my Oasis one to look at and some E3 stuff to laugh at. So um, I'll let you guys go for now. Hope you hope everybody enjoyed. I hope you guys are still here after 50 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, when we talk about real quickly about gaming con. Sure. sure um, real quick. We're just going to make a quick appearance. I didn't get to see. I didn't get Steve Bloom's autograph when he was at Salt Lake Comic Con. Found out he was coming to Game Con. We're going to be I think we're going to be there just a Friday. Yeah, we'll be there Friday. So meet and greet, guys. Meet and greet. I'll, <laughs> I'll, oh, I want to, I'll wear a black shirt and glasses and jeans. So if you see a tall, chunky, dark skinned woman, woman, because I'm old, um, with a black shirt, glasses, and jeans, ask for Julie. Say, are you Julie? And I will be yes. And thank you for listening to the podcast. <laughs> You're such a nerd. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a great way to end it. But yeah, we'll probably be at Gaming Con. I won. Like, yeah. I'd be there for a little bit. Just get his autograph. Because it's Steve Bloom. Yeah. He, 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 he. Julie likes him. I like him now. He's so old. <laughs> I know. He's tw- he is 20 years older than I am, but he doesn't look it. So that's fine. I guess so. But <clears throat> anyways... <laughs> <laughs> the are always the hardest, but hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll be putting this up as soon as I can, much faster than the last time. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I know I, my usual thing is thumbs up and subscribe, but technically this is YouTube. We're gonna still keep it on YouTube because it's a free platform. Uh, we probably will be moving it to SoundCloud a little bit later, but uh, I need to work with album art and all that kind of fun stuff. But when I'm ready, it'll be on SoundCloud for you to be able to download to an MP3. So we will see you guys later. And until we meet again, comrades.